Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you are all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel, man, and welcome to a video where I'm going to be talking about Chelsea's defense. Very, very interesting subject. Chelsea have a multitude of talented young defenders. And yet, Chelsea have big defensive issues. Of course, of late, they have been linked to a multitude of centre-backs, new centre-halves, whether it be um, Titi from Barcelona, whether it be Lewis Dunk of Brighton, maybe Gabriel of Lille, who looks like he's potentially close to signing for Chelsea, and many more centre-backs along the way who have been linked. Sure, it might be evident that Frank Lampard and Chelsea Football Club are indeed interested in bringing in a new centre-half to the back line. I want to let you guys know what I think about Chelsea's current centre-backs and how theoretically, or maybe even realistically, Chelsea have the talent to move forward and progress with the Frank Lampard project with centre-halves that they already have. There's a lot to talk about and it's going to be interesting, but first I want to take a second to thank every single one of you who's donated to my NHS fundraiser, which is now ended. Thank you so much everyone. I put the target out for £500 initially and we absolutely smashed the target. We more than doubled it. So thank you to everyone who's done a kind donation for this excellent cause. Today I'm going to put everyone's Twitter hand who left in their donation message into a random generator pick a winner and I will send the winner a Chelsea Football Club shirt so thank you all to everyone who donated and took part in the uh, chance to win a shirt absolutely brilliant it's really nice to see kindness in difficult times so I and obviously the NHS really appreciate everything all right then Let's get on with it. So Chelsea have got a multitude of centre-backs. Of course, I was running for a few players who Chelsea have been linked with, but Chelsea have a bunch of talent uh, that can play centre-back. Obviously, on the roster at the moment, they have senior player Antonio Rudiger, who is rumoured to be signing a new contract. We've also got Kurt Zuma, who's enjoyed a couple of positive loan spells away from Chelsea. Frank Lampard tried his hardest to make sure he did not push for a permanent transfer to Everton, where he did enjoy a successful loan last season. Season, and he wanted him to remain in the first team. <laughs> Whether he will remain in the first team and he will be one that stays is yet to be seen. But we got Zuma as well. Of course, we've got the golden boy Tomori, who won Derby's player of the season last season. Very, very talented indeed. Unmatched recovery pace when it comes to running back and towards your own goal. Excellent player, very, very talented, obviously scored that wonder goal for Chelsea as well against Wolves, I think it was. And Andreas Christensen, another academy product, who is a very, very talented baller, has got loads of first team experience. Still very young though, he's only just turned 24, yet yeah, he's played a lot in Germany, he's played in different Chelsea regimes in the first team, whether it be Conte, uh, you know, Sarri, or now Frank Lampard. He's been in and around Chelsea for a long, long time. He's very highly rated, a technical footballer, perhaps a little bit lightweight, not really much of a brute, but still the game is changing and Christensen could be appropriate for that. And a couple more I want to mention, Mark Gurhey is obviously on loan at Swansea, and of course Ethan Ampadu, the very very highly rated youngster who Chelsea bought from Exeter, and he can play both defensive midfield or centre back. He is obviously on loan at Leipzig at the moment, not really enjoying a good loan spell over there, although he did have to come in as an emergency centre back to play against Tottenham in the Champions League and he was absolutely magnificent. So there's a bunch, right? But Chelsea are still being linked with loads and loads of centre-halves. Like I said, Gabriel, Mtiti, Lewis Dunk, I pretty much Koulibaly a, a few times over the <laughs> last year or so. They just keep coming around, they keep coming around. And I get why. I think more than anything, there's a lack of vocal seniority in the back line. Perhaps stuff that we've thought we'd probably get from Antonio Rudiger and may still get from Antonio Rudiger but a lack of organization but I do want to speculate could this be a team failing of a sort of collective defensive failing if you look at the best teams in the modern era of football they defend as a system it's systemic you're although you know you've got players like Virgil van Dijk John Terry which will always be valued in every era of football I think if a team fails collectively and systemically, they'll fail defensively and everything's to do with systems and, you know, things being formulaic these days. So I think perhaps where the team progresses in coaching, the whole team might defend better. 
I think. But I looked at the defensive numbers of Chelsea's current four centre-backs and in terms of tackles and interceptions, the joint first place is between Andreas Christensen and Fakayo Tomori, which is really interesting, right? Because you'd think the likes of Rudiger and Zuma would be the more, I don't know, like defensive types because they've both seasoned in the Premier League. They're both, you know, big and strong. But really, it's the two younger, maybe more slight lads that are getting in more tackles and interceptions. Now, they're all playing in the same team. They're playing in a Chelsea football club that likes to play with the ball, that likes to keep possession. Therefore, you'd think they'd be making less tackles and interceptions, which might be the case. But still, Tomori and Christensen are both making 3.4 per game in the Premier League joint top. The difference between Andreas Christensen and Vicayo Tomori is Andreas Christensen is better on the ball. He's been known to be a sort of passing centre-half for a while now. His biggest criticism, Andreas Christensen, was, well, apart from doing a pass across his own goal against Barcelona in the Champions League, <laughs> one of those high-profile mistakes perhaps do haunt you for a while, is he perhaps gets bodied. He's a bit lightweight. People feel like he just gets bullied by, you know, opposition strikers and stuff. And maybe he does, and obviously that is a problem. But I do want to reiterate that in the modern game, it does favour the more slight technical centre-halves. But like I said, he's still joint top for tackles and interceptions. And unlike Tomori, he's got a better passing range. He's got a better passing accuracy. And I think he's more of a cerebral, um, intelligent centre-half than Tomori. Now, it's not to say Tomori hasn't got skills that Christensen hasn't, because he does. Like I said, he's got unrivaled recovery pace in the Chelsea side. Probably maybe in the Premier League as a centre-half. If he's up the pitch and he needs to get back, you want Fakayo Tomori to be running back over all of Chelsea's centre-backs. So that's something he can do that no one else can do. But in terms of full general skill set, at the moment, rather interestingly, it's Andreas Christensen. Off the bat, it's really interesting with those two because I don't think they had a centre-back combination yet. Of course, Tomori and Zuma played a lot. They played in the Ajax game where they had a really good defensive partnership. We've seen a lot of Christensen and Rudiger of late in the latter stages of the season where football was still being played. It was those two. And we've seen Zuma and Rudiger, of course. So it's pretty much been every combination except Christensen and Tomori. Mori, even though they're posting the best numbers. Perhaps Frank Lampard sees them as similar players? I'm not so sure, but like I said, Christensen's got the better distribution. So in terms of choosing a partnership looking forward in terms of what Chelsea have got on the books, I would pick Christensen as one of the starting centre-backs. Not only does his numbers dictate better form throughout the season. In terms of his natural footballing ability, I think it suits. I remember Guardiola latched around his neck after that 1-0 loss to Manchester City where Chelsea were dismal in terms of having no ambition to go forward. Christensen played very well and Guardiola beelined it for Andreas Christensen. He's very much a Guardiola type centre-half, isn't he? So I think he's very technical and I think he suits the Premier League in how top teams want to play in the modern era. So he'd be one of my two. But who would be my second choice? Well, this may be left field or it might not be, but he hasn't played for Chelsea this season and it is going to be Ethan Ampadu. A lot of people are unsure whether Ampadu is a centre-back or a defensive midfielder. He plays DM for Wales very, very well, might I say as well. But he's a very, very good centre-back. I remember hearing Matt Law, the journalist, talk about Ethan Ampadu when seeing him train a couple of years ago now with all the Chelsea centre-halves. And he said to him he looked like the most talented centre-half of the lot. I believe he was 17 at the time, or maybe just about to turn 18 or turn 18. He's so, so aggressive. Remember he was taking, <laughs> with clean tackles, he was damaging opposition players and having to, having them see them go off and they were twice his age. He doesn't shine from any aggressive challenge. He's very, very accurate with his long passing in terms of distribution and he's aggressive and commanding where perhaps Christensen is a little bit more passive and thoughtful with his football. Ethan Ampadu is very much, like I said, an aggressive commanding centre-half and I think together they could build a very interesting, formidable centre-back partnership. Sure, there's a lot of youth in there and perhaps, again, lacking seniority, but I think Ampadu does have that commanding aura about him and even though he's younger than Christensen by a few years and he's still just a very very young player generally 
I feel like if you've got that in your locker, it will just come out. Look at John Terry, he was doing the exact same thing when he came into the Chelsea side, commanding players around him a lot older than him. I believe Ethan Ampadu can do that as well. Like Andreas Christensen, Ethan Ampadu has excellent distribution. He puts in a lot of tackles and interceptions like Christensen, but he's far more aggressive and that's what you need in the back line. And I think together they could make like I said, a formidable partnership without having to spend loads of money on the new centre-half for a plug-and-play option. Chelsea still have loads of other options at centre-half. Mark Gurhey, who's gone to Swansea, is very highly rated generally at the club. But in terms of some players that could come in quickly, I like the idea of that. Now, I know Ampadu hasn't played much at Leipzig, but I know Frank Lampard does really rate him as he was waxing lyrical about the player before he went on loan, saying he would have liked him to be in the squad, but he understands the loan might be the best move. Turns out, it wasn't. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you agree with my centre-half partnership? Let me know in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed the content today, please do subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel and like the video because it helps me out a lot. Thank you again to everyone who donated to the fundraiser. That's really, really kind of everyone. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, come follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, you lot. Enjoy the football that is not happening and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby